Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. In this video, I will be explaining what webhooks are and how you can use them in your projects to automate data uh, between um, your web application and third-party services using Zapier or any other service that you want to use that can accept webhooks. Um, in this video, I'm going to be using Zapier as my main platform to show you guys how to retrieve data from um, a WordPress um, contact form. So to get started, I'm just going to quickly kind of give you a quick rundown here on what web on what webhooks are, <clears throat> in case you're not familiar with them. Um, so I found this article here online, which gives a very good um, explanation of what um, of what a of what a webhook is. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to quickly read this. A webhook, also called a web callback or HTTPS push API, is a way for an application to provide external applications with real-time information. Unlike typical APIs, where you would need to pull data or pull for data very frequently in order to get it real-time, a webhook delivers data to these applications as it happens, meaning you get data immediately, All right? So if you scroll down here a bit, you'll see, um, you know, webhooks deliver messages to other applications, instant and secure. And you see here they have Zapier, and they have a few other services, hook.io, um, ifttt. Um, I haven't used any of these other services. The only one that I've worked with is uh, Zapier. Um, so a webhook, uh, webhooks have actually been around pretty much since since the beginning of uh, the web, really. I mean, um, it's basically just a URL with data appended to, en to the end of it. Um, so just to give you guys um, an idea, um, actually, you know what, let's go into Zapier and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So I'm in my Zapier account and um, I'm on I'm under the Zaps um, section in Zapier. So I'm just going to go ahead here, I'm going to make a new Zap. Alright, so when this happens, so basically what I'm going to set up here is uh, an action. And what I want to do is I want to run a webhook. So I'm going to select webhooks by Zapier. All right, and I'm going to choose a trigger, which is going to be a catch hook. So wait for a new post, put, or get to a Zapier URL. And I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing Zapier right. It could be Zapier, Zapier, I don't know, whatever. Um, I call it Zapier. Uh, so this is going to be a catch hook. I'm going to hit continue. And there's our webhook URL. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it into Notepad real quick. <clears throat> real quickly and <clears throat> I'll show you in a second exactly how this works I'm gonna hit continue okay so test your trigger send a request to this webhook URL okay so what I'm gonna do is at the end of this URL I'm just gonna remove that uh, forward slash I'm gonna type in first name equals Leo and last name equals Nanfera and what are the other fields that I want in here um, email equals leo.nanfera oops not rogers pulsar media .ca. Um, and phone equals 416-555-8888 just for an example, and date of birth equals, I'm just going to put 02, 12, 80. Okay, so you see this is pretty much what a webhook is. So what we're doing here, let's see if I can zoom in here a bit, right? So all, all we're doing here is we're just appending data to the end of this webhook URL, which was provided to us by Zapier. And I mean, if you've been a web developer for, you know, I mean, I've been a web, uh, I've been a web de developer now for 14 years, and this is very familiar to anyone who, um, who's done web development work, because really, you know, this has been, we've been using this pretty much since the beginning of the web, right? Um, if, you're, if you've done get requests before where you're sending data uh, you know, between one page to another, and you're, you know, you needed to pass that URL, that data through the URL. 
I mean, that's you know, I mean, I mean, that's pretty much where you're running here. You're running a GET request, right? Um, so, I mean, nowadays we call this a webhook, right? So, all right. So, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to run it in my browser. Okay, so you'll see here we got um, we got a response from Zapier, and it's saying that the data was accepted successfully. That's pretty much what it's saying: status success. Right. So if I go back to Zapier now and I type test trigger, bang, there we go. So you see that it, that the webhook ran and it sent the data to Zapier and Zapier captured that data. Right. And it's very important to keep in mind here or to be aware of how Zapier is um, taking your parameters. See how it's actually appending query string underscore underscore before my parameters. Um, keep that in mind because um, that's going to be important later on in this video. Um, I'm going to get back to this later in the video, but it's very important to be aware of this. That Zapier is actually appending query string underscore underscore to your parameters. Um, and we're going to need that later on in the video when we send data from our PHP form to Zapier. Okay, so I'm going to hit continue. And I'm going to connect this to Google Sheets. Right, so I'm going to do, okay, so basically when this happens, when we catch a hook, we want to do this, right? We want to send data to a Google Sheet. So I've already, I already have a Google Sheet here that is set up, right? I just called it Webhook Entries. And you'll see here I have first name, last name, email, phone, date of birth, right? So these are all the parameters which match up to, or these are all the column headers which match up to the parameters that I sent in my webhook URL, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna select Google Sheets, um, select an action, we are going to create a spreadsheet row, create a new row in a specific spreadsheet, that's what we want, continue, and we want to make sure that we are logged into our Google account. Um, so I'm already logged in here. I've already um, I've already connected my Google account to my Zapier account. Um, but if you haven't done that, it's probably going to prompt you to connect your account to Zapier. Um, so in my case, I've already done that. So I'm just going to select my account, Google Sheets, from my Pulsar Media account. Continue. Okay, for the drive, we don't really need to choose that. Um, we're just going to select my spreadsheet here, webhook entries. And I'm going to select my worksheet, which is data sheet. So you'll see that that matches up with my spreadsheet. Uh, so I have webhook entries, and you'll see here at the bottom, I called this sheet data sheet. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do, okay, so it detected the column headers from my Google Sheet, which is great. So it detected these headers. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of define the placeholder um, of what the data needs to be when it comes in to Zapier or when it comes into Google Sheets. Um, okay, so for our first name, we're going to grab query string first name. And don't worry about the value here. That's, that's kind of, it just acts as a placeholder. Don't, don't worry about that. The important thing is that we're defining the actual, uh, the actual query string, right? Query string first name. Then we're going to select query string last name, query string email, query string phone, and query string date of birth. Okay, let's hit continue. Okay, so now we can actually run a test to make sure that the data gets inserted into our Google Sheet. So I'm going to hit test and review. <clears throat> Okay, test was successful. We'll use this as a sample, blah, blah, blah. A test spreadsheet row was sent to Google Sheets just now. So let's jump here. And yep, there is our data. All right, so the Zap is working. Our webhook is working, <clears throat> which is good. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to turn our Zap on. So you'll see at the bottom here it says Zap is ready. Now turn it on. We're going to turn this on. Okay, so you'll see here in the upper right corner that the on switch has been activated. I'm gonna hit done editing. Go to my zaps. And sorry, I have everything selected here. Okay, so you'll see here that the zap is here. I didn't actually name it, 
Um, we're going to call this web. Uh, let's just call this uh, Google Sheets. Uh, Google Sheets um, example. All right. Uh, let me go. Uh, yeah. So that <clears throat> that'll automatically save. Let's go back. Okay. So we have our Google Sheets example. Um, zap. Right. Okay, so Zapier is all done at this point. We've configured our webhook and we've defined all of the parameters that we need to accept from that webhook, um, which needs to be read by Google Sheets. Right. Um, okay, so that's all set up. Now the next part is going to be sending data from a form, um, a, a form that I, a custom form that I created in WordPress for a client recently. I'll show you guys here. So I have this form here. All right, we have all of these fields, first name, last name, email, phone number, date of birth. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write up some code in PHP <clears throat> that's going to send these fields to my Google Sheets, right, <clears throat> through Zapier. All right, so, the peer, so Zapier is kind of acting like the middleman. It's, it's gonna catch the hook and send that data to my Google Sheets account, all right? Okay, so... Now I'm going to jump into Visual Studio Code and I'm going to start writing up some code here. So this is already some pre-existing code that I have. This is my PHP code for my form, um, which is actually being executed through WordPress. <clears throat> so, um, all right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to send my contact form data to the peer. Okay, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a URL variable. And in here, I am going to select my hook right up to there. Okay, so there's my URL, or I guess maybe we can call that webhook if you want. That might make more sense, we'll call it webhook. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna define my data structure. So I'm just gonna call this app data equals array. All my data is gonna get saved in here. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the first parameter or the first entry in my array, which is going to be first name. And this is going to be coming from a pre-existing variable called first name, right? And then I'm going to create last name. And again, this is coming from a pre-existing variable that, I, that I've already coded called last name. And then I'm going to create email. It's going to come from, I believe it's email address. Then I'm going to create phone, which is coming from phone number. And then I'm going to create date of birth. And this one I believe is coming from birth date. Okay. All right, so this is the data that I'm gonna be sending to my webhook. So I actually have a function here that I've already gone ahead and created. And I'm going to pass in my webhook and I'm going to pass in my zap data. Okay, now I'll show you what this function looks like. I've already gone ahead and coded this. So basically what I have in my function here <clears throat> is I'm just doing a, a curl request and this curl request is going to be sending the data to that webhook, right? So you'll see here I passed in my URL, which is the webhook that we defined and my data, which is going to get encoded, with, uh, it's going to get JSON encoded. And then we're just running our curl execution here, right? So passing in my URL, I have some headers that I created here just to specify the content type, and also the content length, which is just the string length of my um, JSON encoded data, right? And then I'm setting the curl option, I'm setting the request to post, which is what we need to <clears throat> which is what we're doing because if you if you recall back in Zapier we set we set it to a, a catch hook so it's going to be a post request right and then we're passing in our JSON encoded data then we're executing the the curl request and then we're just closing out the um, that curl request 
All right, so that's pretty much all we need. <clears throat> Let me just quickly go back up here to my code that I defined. Now there's one thing here we need to do. So this is, uh, so I'm just gonna be backtracking here a bit. Uh, back in Zapier, I mentioned that there was that query string underscore underscore. So we need to append that um, in our array values, right? So here I need to add query string underscore underscore, right? Because this is how Zapier is going to be um, accepting the data. So query string underscore underscore, let's add this to all of my array data. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save. I'm just gonna quickly upload this to my dev drive. Let's go back to my site here. Okay. So I'm just gonna refresh the page here, hit control F5. Okay, so now, see my Google Sheet, I'm just gonna delete the entry here. Delete row. Okay, so now I'm going to submit my information here. I'm going to call this Leonardo Nanfera, Nanfera at media.ca phone number is going to be 416-222-3333, um, and I'm going to en enter my date of birth. I'm, right now, I'm just going to select any date. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hit submit form. Thank you, your inquiry, your inquiry, your, your inquiry has been received. I'm going to jump back into Google Sheets, and there's my data. Beautiful. So there we have it. So the webhook fired. It was sent through PHP through a curl request. It was sent to Zapier, and Zapier sent it to my Google Sheets. Excellent. So guys, that's pretty much how you work with webhooks. They're very easy to work with, um, and they've been around pretty much since the beginning of web development itself, like going back 20 years. All it is is it's just a URL with data appended to it. <clears throat> and, and that's it. So it's extremely easy to work, get started with webhooks. Um, I highly recommend using Zapier. It's a great service. If you have a premium account, you can um, create, uh, I think, unlimited zaps. Um, I'm not sure how many zaps you can create with the free account, um, but I think there's a limit on how many zaps you can run per zap. But if you get the premium account, if you get the premium account, um, I think you can do like unlimited zaps. So. Um, but yeah, guys, so there you have it. That's pretty much how you, you work with webhooks. Um, you know, uh, working with webhooks with Zapier and sending data from, you know, WordPress or PHP or React, whatever platform you're working with, all you're doing is creating this webhook, appending data to it, and sending it to whatever service you need to send it to, right? So in this case, it's Zapier. And that's it, that's working with webhooks. So anyways, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, feel free to check out my website, pulsarmedia.ca. If you just wanna reach out, ask me some personal questions, you know, that's fine. You can, I have my email posted up on my website so you can uh, get a hold of me there. Um, and that's it. So hope you guys enjoyed this, hope you guys found it useful and uh, hope you guys um, have fun getting started with webhooks.